Fifth Hour Radio Show. Mike, where are you originally from, and, and how did you end up landing in New York? Well, I am originally from um, a little suburban area right outside Montreal, Canada, and I, um, you know, ever since I can remember, I've always had, um, day, I've always daydreamed about, you know, making it in New York City, and um, the first opportunity I had to to move to New York, is, you know, I, I took it. Well, I made it happen. I, I didn't really, there wasn't really an opportunity. I kind of, kind of created one. Yeah, you um, only. It says you only had three hundred bucks in your pocket. Yeah, that's that's kind of the kind of the story. Um, <laughs> I um, yeah. I mean, you know, I just um, you know, I, I I had I had this yearning to to get out of my um, humble surroundings and and make something of myself, and uh, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but. Um, some some reason I thought New York City would be the best place to connect the dots for you know for someone with my special skill set, which mm-hmm. was still unbeknownst to me at the time. But anyway, <laughs> so I um I uh you know I just uh packed my 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 little overnight bag and moved to New York City. Well, I mean it wasn't it wasn't as um um. Who did that? Some who packed up their yeah. It wasn't as hobo as it sounds. It was um. <laughs> you wasn't carrying you know, the stick I, I, with the little handkerchief or whatever with your. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I, I I planned for it, and you know, but I did, I did, have, you know, I, I did move to New York City without any money, and. How how rough yeah. was that at first? I mean, just branching out into the big city like that, and just. It's um. It's pretty rough, you know. For a while, I was um couch surfing and um. And then I, uh, a friend of mine from Montreal actually moved down um, to New York with me, and um, she kind of had a she had a little bit of, of money. I mean, she was you know she was actually younger than I was, but um, you know her family had a little bit of money, so she she was able to um, get an apartment. You know, I couldn't get an apartment because I I couldn't you know I mean I couldn't qualify for one because I didn't have a job or anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> So she um, she helped with that, and um, you know, but you know, before long, I, I got my feet on my ground, um, my feet on the ground, and um, you know, and uh, I was off and running. I just started making things happen, and you know, um, yeah. What, you know, what was all, your first? All kind of a blur. Yeah. What was your first job? You know, when you got there. I waited on tables. I waited on tables for a long time. I was a. Uh, a waiter slash many things, a waiter slash model for a long time. Um, but um, waiting on tables, you know, pretty much, the, you know, saved my life and got me through a lot of very uh, difficult, difficult times, both financially and and personally. You know, there's there's a real camaraderie um, with working in restaurants in New York. I don't know if you know anyone who's ever worked in a restaurant in New York can tell you that uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of experience that you gain that helps you in the future. You know, like I didn't realize it at the time, but you know, a lot of the experience that I got from working in restaurants in New York City really helps me in a lot of ways. As far as modeling is concerned, was was it an easy transition for you to become successful in that field, or did you have to overcome a few obstacles to reach a level that you would consider successful? Um. I, you know, to be honest with you, I can't really say that I was a, a, a hyper successful model. It took me a really long time to be able to make a living at it. You know, so like, you know, like I said a second ago, I was a model slash waiter for a really long time. But it was in the last like three or four years of being a model. You know, I was a model for about ten or twelve years. Um, in the last three or four years is when I was able to support myself. Um, you know, and it was humble. It wasn't, you know, it was modest. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, Giselle or anything. <laughs> I, wasn't, well, well, I wasn't making the millions. But, you know, I was able to support myself. And, you know, it certainly um, opened up a lot of um, a lot of doors for me as far as, you know, future, you know, future opportunities. It certainly segued very well into, into photography. When you When you were modeling, I mean, that's a pretty rough profession, right? The thing about modeling is it's, it's such a fickle, random um, thing. You know, you, it's nothing that you really have any control over other than showing up. You know, there's really nothing you can do to 
you know, if you're not the flavor of the month, then, you know, you, there's really nothing you can do about it. So, you know, it's pretty it's pretty hard on the morale to, you know, to be rejected for something that you really have no control over. So for someone who was as insecure as I was, it was, it was a <laughs> pretty crushing um, profession to go into, um, you know, with my... Um, self-esteem issues that I that I struggled with for a long time. But, you know, it, it, helps, with, it helps with all of that stuff. You know, there are a lot of benefits. You know, the road, the road that I've traveled, you know, at the time it seemed, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't make sense of tales of stuff when it was happening, but, you know, it all makes sense to me now. So what initially sparked your interest in photography? That was kind of a fluke. I got a, I got a camera for Christmas when I was uh, 28 years old. And um, I just, it was an uh, odd thing. I mean, you know, obviously I, I, I had used cameras before, but, you know, I'd never, this was like a, a pretty fancy camera that I got. And um, for something about that moment in time, that it just, you know, the camera became a uh, conduit for, for everything that I needed to say or, or express creatively. And, um, it just opened the floodgates, and I, I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't close them after that. So that's kind of what start, what started it. I, I, you know, it was just such a, it was a, a strange trigger, you know, and I can't really, I can't really recall like, a, you know, something unfolding. It was really from one one day to the next that I, you know, I got this camera, and I, I just became consumed with with photographing everything in sight, and. Um, and you know, fortunately, I uh, I was able to turn it into you know into a career, because um, otherwise it would have you know it would have decimated me financially because <laughs> it's a very expensive hobby to have. Oh, yeah. generating income from it. Do you still own that camera? I don't. I don't. Do you that, wish you, know, you still was, own it? Do you wish you still had it? I do. Yeah, I've been feeling really nostalgic lately, you know, like I'm in my, my very late 40s now, and you know, I guess, I think that's a time in, in one's life when you start reflecting back on all the choices that you made and, and where you are now, and and I just, you know, I, I, I have been feeling really nostalgic, and now that you bring it up, I, I probably would have um, cherished that camera, you know, if I'd still had it, but, you know, it became obsolete, you know, with, you know, technology, technological advances, um, Happen, happening as uh, expediently as they have been, it's, um, it's you know, like, it, that, that camera was obsolete to me, and, you know, I just, I'm not one to um, romanticize, like, material things, so I just, you know, I yeah. ditched it for the, the newer model. Mm -hmm. So as far as learning the camera, you know, the camera's ins and outs and becoming confident in what you could do with what you had learned, how did you start climbing the ranks, and, and what did you do to separate yourself from what, you know, I'm sure is hundreds if not thousands of photographers in the New York area. I actually started, I was living in Los Angeles when I started shooting. I, I first, when, when I moved to the U.S., I, I first moved to New York, and then I, I moved to um, Miami for a couple of years, and then I was in L.A. for 10 years, and it was while I was in L.A. that I, I started shooting. And, the, the, you know, I can't, there, there wasn't like a, a formulaic method that I used to, you know, to climb the ranks. But there really isn't one for a creative field like photography. There really is no, you know, it's not like law or business where you know if you do A, B, and C, you know, mm -hmm. the, the end result will be D. This is, you know, it's such a uh, again, it's it's sort of a random thing. And um, I, you know, I just it. It was one of those things that I was just, you know, I was so consumed with photography that that my whole world revolved around it, and it was in, it was inevitable that like some form of um, income, you know, had to, you know, be, became, you know, had to be generated from it. Um, what I was, I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating it. Um, it just kind of fell into your lap. It, it, I mean, it just, it just it did, worked. It did. It did. It was. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I didn't, I didn't follow the, the, the usual trajectory, you know, even for photographers. Um, you know, I never studied photography. I got this camera. I sort of taught myself everything. This predates the internet, so you know, I was reading manuals and I took a couple of lighting classes and I basically, you know, through trial and error, figured everything out. And I, I literally would start going. I guess you know what I started to do was I started 
dropping my very humble portfolio off at various magazines that I thought that I would like to shoot for. And I started going up to celebrities at the gym, asking them if I could photograph them. And, you know, and most people, you know, called security on me, but, <laughs> but there were, you know, a couple of times it panned out and, um, you know, I did a good job and, uh, it sort of led to other things and, and it just kind of snowballed, you know, like I, I, I went, I was in Europe one summer modeling. Actually, there was a couple of years of overlap while I was, when I first started shooting that I had to subsidize it with, um, you know, by continuing to model. So I was in Europe doing that and I, I was in London and I went to a magazine stand and looked through the magazines of the ones that I wanted to shoot for and literally just called up all the editors and most of them hung up on me or I didn't even get through <laughs> most of them. But you kept um, with but it. The ones that I the ones that I did get through to were, were receptive, and I, I, you know, I went in to see them, and I ended up shooting a couple of fashion editorials for some English magazines, and when those came out, I got, you know, calls for ad campaigns, and, you know, it just, like, was pretty immediate, um, and I think it's because I was doing something very specific, and you asked me what, what I did to separate myself. I mean, I wasn't doing this to separate myself, it's just something that I... I love doing, and what I used to do, and this predates digital enhancement of photography, like Photoshop. Um, I used to literally hand paint on photographs. Oh, okay. So it's kind of it has like a very painterly sort of illustratory kind of feel to them. So they were part photograph, part illustration, and you know, and, and this was in the early '90s, and when people were just I don't know, it was just it was it, it was something that that wasn't very prevalent in in the world of photography so you know people really responded well to it and it sort of singled me out like out of the gate and mm -hmm. i um i got some pretty great clients out of it and i was going to say as far as your clients um who would you consider your first big break you know as far as photographing someone with you know major notoriety Oh, I think I'm still waiting for my big break. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, there, there really hasn't been a defining shoot. I mean, there have been a lot of mem memorable shoots, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, like, you, uh, early, very early on in my career, like in the 90s when, when he was still pretty, um, you know, pretty big name in music, uh, I shot Rod Stewart's um, album cover. Oh, wow, that's, that's and, a big one. And I thought, you know, like, wow, this is this is it, you know, like, uh, this is I've arrived, and this is this is going to set me on the path to, um, you know, fame and fortune, and uh, and there's no turning back. And I shot it, and it came out, and weeks and months went by, and no no other phone calls. So you know, there, <laughs> there was no, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to how things happen. You know, you just have to be consistent and um, and uh, tenacious. And, um, you know, just, and you have to love what you do. Otherwise, you know, it'll, it'll crush you. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs in the business. But, um, you know, again, like, I, you know, back to your point, um, you know, there, there really wasn't ever a defining moment where my, the course of my life just changed drastically, you know, because of one, one shoot mm -hmm. or working with one celebrity. It's just, you know, it's constantly been, um, uh, a compounding thing, you know, just, you know, one thing, you know, and they, you know, it was, it was, um, you know, it's, and it's still like that, you know I mean? You still, I still have to, you know, I still have to put forth like constant effort. You know, I, I've, I've never really been able to kick back and just say, okay, you know, like it's on autopilot and, um, you still have that same passion that you had from the very beginning, basically. I do. I do. I mean, it's shifted and changed, and and what what used to drive me a lot of the things that used to drive me um, were not healthy things. You know, there were insecurities and um, and 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 need for you know need for gratification and need for approval. You know, for, you know what everyone needs really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and I've kind of, I've kind of resolved. You know, I, I've been able to fulfill a lot of that stuff in myself, you know, as I got older. So a lot of the mo that motivation has dissipated, you know. So I really I really am very selective. You know, I do stuff 
that I really want to do, you know, and I don't do it because it's such and such a uh, celebrity or, you know, like I just, I, I, my priorities have completely changed. So, yes, I'm still passionate about it, but, you know, the passion is, is um, you know, I've shifted it to other areas of my life that are not photography related. Mm. Well, as far as your clients are concerned, do they ever have an idea of what they want done or how they're portrayed in the photographs, or do they have, you know, do they leave everything up to you and just let you do your thing? Sometimes they, you know, depending what the, the shoot is for, most of the time they'll let me do my thing, you know, especially later in my career, you know, when, when I sort of kind of made, it, made a name for myself, um, transforming people, um, you know, I kind of became known for not just taking, you know, beautiful pictures of somebody as they were, but actually shooting, you know, putting them out of contact, like creating an alter ego for them and, you know, through hair and makeup and wardrobe and, 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 and photographing them that way. And, you know, it's sort of, it was sort of a jarring thing a lot of times. And, and, um, I kind of became known for that. And uh, a lot of people knew what they were getting when they would go into it. So they would just leave it up to me and let me do my thing. And, you know, and invariably, you know, everyone was, was happy. I was happy. I was creatively fulfilled and they got to see themselves in a, in a different light. And, um, so basically um, a photo yeah. shoot with you is a, is an experience. It's not no five minute deal. It's, it's, it's on. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. You know, they're, it's very, it's very, they're very laborious and, um, you know, it's an intense experience. It's not, you know, people like friends of mine ask me, like, oh, can you just, you know, swing by my place and, and shoot my kids or, you know, photograph, do a family portrait? I'm like, mm, that's not really how it works with me. <laughs> you know, you, we need to, you know, we need, like, a set designer and we need a wardrobe stylist and, like, some hair okay. makeup people and some prop people. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a very involved um, process with me. So what is the most elaborate what is the most elaborate thing that you have ever done in a shoot? Something that just went all out. Well, I have to say, I did this shoot for um, a travel magazine for quite a while ago. I guess it'd be, it'd be about ten years ago now. And we, it was um, it was a fashion shoot that we did in Central Australia, mm. and uh, it was you know um, near Ayers Rock, which is now called Uluru. We. Um, we, you know, a bunch of us from the U.S. flew there, and we flew models in from from Paris, and um, we got camels. I mean, it was a big production, and we had, like, 30 people, like, trekking to this location, you know, in Jeeps. So it was, it was like a movie you know? set. Yeah, it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty intense, and, you know, we were up at, like, at 3 a.m., you know, setting up the equipment, and, you know, I mean, it was, it was sort of like a travel kind of piece that we had. You know, we were we were pitching tents, and we wanted it to be very sort of Ralph Lauren. You know, very, um, you know, uh, I don't know, um, Kate. Uh, what what's the oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. But like Audrey Hepburn goes to you know you know Roman Holiday kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh so, yeah. You know, it was a very it was a very um, um, upscale sort of experience. So you know, we were pitching these very elaborate. Tents and we had you know all this elaborate stuff that we had to photograph, and we you know we had um we had Aborigines and we you know it was a, it was a it was a big production. So I would have to say that was probably the most elaborate thing I've ever done in a shoot. Well, tell us about Pretty Masculine. What is it, and what are you hoping to convey to people with this project? Pretty Masculine is um it's it's it had it's all they had a lot it has a lot of components. First of all, it's um you know separate from my my commercial. You know, every man, my celebrity and all of that stuff. This is just a completely independent project that I've been working on for, for three years. And it, initially it started out being, um, you know, an exploration for deconstruction of gender stereotypes. And, and it's just morphed into this whole other thing. And, you know, it's sort of like branded itself with the name Pretty Masculine. So it's kind of gotten away from the the dissection of gender stereotypes, which is what it was initially. It's, now it's just grown into like a this massive creative project that, you know, I've involved literally hundreds of models and entertainers and, and, and artists, like amazing painters um, who've actually painted, can, you know, like use the human body as canvases. Um, so it's, it's, it's become like this huge collaborative thing with, um, 
with so many people. And um, another component that I wanted to do is, is to, you know, in the digital age, I wanted to have sort of um, a way for people to consume art that wasn't in a gallery or wasn't like a coffee table book. It was like an immediate way, you know, especially in light of, of how, you know, most people consume information these days is, is digitally and, you know, specifically through a mobile device. I wanted to create an app that um, sort of was uh, a way to experience photography, you know, in a multi-tiered way. You know, and not only is it photographed, but there are videos, like there are backup videos to, you know, the behind-the-scenes videos or time lapses of, of the body painting process. So it sort of gives like a 360-degree view of, you know, of, of, you know, my process, my creative process. Photography really is a beautiful art. Uh, one of my favorites is, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of it, some of Leonard Nimoy's photography that he's done. He's done I, some. I haven't, but I. You I need to check that out because like, it is quite masterful. Yeah, he is really awesome. Randy's a big Star Trek fan. I guess he tries to add Star Trek into every interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> no, man. Really yeah. though, really though, he is he is an awesome photographer as well. And, and yeah, he, he plays yeah, a better yeah. Spock. <laughs> Good old Spock. Yeah. How do you watch Star Trek? I love I love Star Trek. I'm, do you like I'm, the old Star Trek or the, or the new Star Trek? I kind of like I, mean, I like them both for different reasons. You know, I grew up with the old Star Trek. Um, you know, but but like the the film, the last couple of movies that that they made. Um, you know, there's just like a, a visual. You know, I'm a visual person, and mm -hmm. and you know, it, it with the the technology and the special effects that, that they have these days, you know, it just makes the experience so much richer for me because, of, because I'm such a visual person. You know, like, I, I really feel like I'm I'm experiencing it. You know, where, you know, now that I look back on, on William Shatner's version of Star Trek, you know, it was it was incredibly entertaining and it's sort of very fantastical and it took me out of my, you know, out of my, my humdrum world, but... But you know, looking back on it, it was you know, you know, the, the, you could yeah, tell they were on a sound stage, and it was very, it was very kind of um, campy. <laughs> yeah, it was a little campy. So now, now it's you know, it's amazing to see it, you know, come to, you know, come to the point that it's that it's at. Um, mm -hmm. Although I haven't seen the last, the last one because I'm, I'm actually waiting to get. Uh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm doing some home renovations. I'm doing like a little home theater in my basement. So I'm waiting to get the. Definitely want to christen that theater with the newest one because it's awesome. That's what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm waiting for. So I was going to ask you, you know, outside of photography, what do you do as your hobbies? Do you travel a lot? You got favorite TV shows, favorite foods? Um, I used to travel a ton. Um, most of it was, was work related. I um, I adopted I adopted a pit bull um, about a year a little over a year ago and and that dog has sort of changed my whole well, it changed all my priorities <laughs> all I want to do is like stay home and hang out with my dog and my <laughs> you know my partner yeah. I mean I know that you know and and uh, you know I've done I've done you know, my bucket list is, you know, I pretty much have checked everything off my bucket list, I have to say. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fortunate and I'm very grateful. Um, and now, like, everything's sort of icing on the cake. And, you know, I just, I, I just moved out to rural New Jersey. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't, I, you know, my, my, I did my time in New York City and now, like, I'm out in the country and I, I'm out here with the dog and, you know, and, and my partner. And, and it's just, um. Just living the good life. It just, you know, it just, I'm simplifying it. You know, like, I, I just, I I don't, I don't have that heightened need for stimulation like I used to. You know, like, I'm very, my my whole outlook is so, has changed, changed so drastically. And I don't know if it's the result of, of all over my dog or, <laughs> or, you know, or, or him coming or, or me, like, being open to having a dog in the first place was part of my mental shift, but. Um, but yeah, I'm like a, I'm a different person than I was like two, three years ago. Now, now speaking of your dog, you are involved in some, uh, uh projects to help save abused and abandoned pit bulls. Now is, is your yeah. dog a pit bull? Yes. Dog? Okay. Yeah. He's the sweetest, um, the sweetest. He's like a little kid. Like he's the <laughs> sweetest, funniest, 
little teddy bear. I know, man. I got a dog myself. I got actually, I have three dogs, and yes, we treat them just like you would treat a human being, and you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe well, even maybe you know, even more so. <laughs> well, you know, that's it. You know, it's it's you know, dog. Yeah, I mean, there's something about there's something about having a relationship, like a connection to a dog. You know, I mean, you don't get any you don't get any back talk, or, <laughs> you know, and they treat you so much better than most people do. So the reality is, is you want to treat them better than you treat most people. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people, um, a lot of people care more about their animals than they do other human beings. <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, and there's there's a you know there's, there's a reason for that. I used to be very leery of people who. You know, you know, like Bridget Bardot, who, you know, who moved to the compound and you know, and adopted like a bunch of dogs and animals, and you know, she sort of became a recluse. And which I, I always thought that that's so strange. You know, she had all she had this, you know, she had such an exciting life, and she gave it all up to take care of a bunch of dogs. And but you know, I totally get it now. You know, I mean, <laughs> especially being in entertainment. Okay, I'm just, I'm just I'm divulging a lot right here. Being in entertainment in any capacity. You know, as you probably know, you know, I mean, you really have to have a special skill set to kind of maneuver through it all. And, and at some point, it just becomes, you know, it becomes a little exhausting, mm-hmm. you know, and you just want to stay home and, and, and you know, have your dog lay in your lap and not get any back talk. <laughs> <laughs> Eat popcorn and watch movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it boils down to. <laughs> well, man. Do you have any upcoming projects or big things happening in your life right now that you could let the people in on? What am I doing? Um, <laughs> You're being a recluse right now. So. <laughs> I, I really, I really am. Like you know, like I, 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 I have I bought this house, you know, which has been an all-consuming. You know, I totally got it this place, and I've been working on it. You know, it's been really re- a really great cathartic creative process as well. You know, which I, I didn't, you know, I thought it would be very stressful, and but. It was actually really um, gratifying, creative, you know, to take a house and, you know, and I just kind of put, you know, I got it and put my, my spin on it. And, um, you know, and that's sort of been, um, I don't know. I mean, that's that's sort of like been occupying all of my psyche lately. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I sort I, I have, I have, which are, you know, I do have projects coming up, but. I have to say, not none of them are as exciting as my home renovation. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's a new right career now. path for you. You know, some kind of like interior design or something. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> well, before we get off here, um, I always give our guests a chance to plug their social media and their website. So, if you do that, man, that'd be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. My um, actually, the, the website that I want to um, really um, direct people to is pretty masculine. Dot com where you can download the app. Um, and uh, my my website, my personal website is MikeRuiz.com. And all my social media is MikeRuiz1. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, they're all MikeRuiz1. Well, Mike, man, thank you so much. I know uh, we ran a little over than what I told you we'd do, uh, uh, but I really appreciate you uh, taking time out tonight and talking to us. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The 25th Hour. Radio Show.